How's everybody doing? I hope everybody's doing okay. Welcome to Sit Down News. Before I begin, let me give a quick shout out to Ratchet, our sponsor. Ratchet's a clothing company out of the UK. They have clothing for men, women, and children. I'll put a link down below. Go check them out. You might want to buy yourself something for Christmas, or you might want to treat somebody to a Christmas present. So I spoke about the bananas and this Peter Pan on the last episode I did, and I received a lot, a lot of questions asking me for a little more detail. I left some things out, so I'm going to touch upon it right now. The one thing that I didn't say, and I found out, and we found out, was the night that I went to go see Ronnie G at his house, and he told me that I need to go speak to the other Michael, which is Michael Padavona. Unbeknown to me, Ronnie G gave Michael Palmacio, and Palmacio was another member of his crew, the only member to have a relationship still with Peter Pan. When he finds out that Palmacio is still talking to this kid, that's how much he hated him. He gives Palmacio the ultimatum, which, which took place that later that night that I was at his house. The ultimatum was you get a crew together and go to work on this kid tonight, or I shelf you tomorrow. And Ronnie definitely meant it. And Palmacio got it done. Palmacio was the one who put everybody together to get this kid, even though he was friends with Peter Pan. So I left that part out. I just wanted to just clear that up. Now, another incident happened later on. After I find out about the torturing of the Mercedes from this Peter Pan and this kid, Jonathan, Ronnie G reaches out for me and asks if I could meet with him. I meet him at two o'clock in the morning. And for those of you who know where I'm talking about Howard Beach, I met him by the weeds. So the reason we met so late was Ronnie was on paper, as I've mentioned, and Ronnie really couldn't be seen with me, but we needed to talk. He needed to see me. So when I met him, he pulled up with Michael Padovona. Um, Padovona was acting captain for Ronnie. As I mentioned, that's who he told me to speak to as far as the whole Joe Cafe and Peter Pan incident. We got out, we greeted each other, and Ronnie had suspicion that Michael Palmacio was involved with Peter Pan torching this car. And he was adamant that Palmacio sent Peter Pan to torch the car. And he said, John, please, I need this answer because if that's true, I'm shelving Palmacio. He was always looking to shelf this guy. So, and let me just say something. In that life, you really don't want to be responsible for someone getting shelved, where if it was true, I'm going to give that answer that, yeah, he was involved and get the guy shelved. You don't really want to be responsible for that happening. But this was not the case. And I explained this to Ronnie and he says, John, please, I know this guy was involved. I know the kid talks, still talks with him. I said, Ronnie, take it from me. The kid explained it was the Gambinos. It's their beef. He got involved. You, you told me he's a wannabe, he's a punk. He's this, you, you don't believe it? He got involved. He never should have got involved. Palmacio had nothing to do with this. Are you sure? I'm positive. All right. So Palmacio was now out of it because Ronnie was looking to looking to shelf this guy. Now, in the interim of all of this, this Peter Pan was not allowed in a restaurant called Mateo's. I know Anthony, one of the owners, Amoroso, since I'm a young guy. He's a nice guy, Anthony. And there was an incident there between a bartender, this kid, Peter Tuccio, and Peter Tuccio's father, who was an ex-cop, and the Gambinos banned this Peter Tuccio from entering Mateo's back then. So after this incident with the, when I find out that the car was torched and all of that, I'm going to meet Joe Perna, who at the time was a part of our crew and, and a member with the Lucchese's, who's coming along 
with Joey Molino. Joey Molino, as everyone knows, is the alleged boss of Philadelphia. So we're going to meet at Mateo's, and I'm there with Blaze Carrazzo. Blaze Carrazzo's a friend or a member of the Gambinos. I think I tried to get in touch with little Joey DiBenedetto. He was out with his wife that night. So it was Joe Perna, Joey Molino, Blaze, and who happened to be at another table was Joe Cafe, the uncle to this Pituccio. He later joins us when he's done with whoever he was eating with. He comes over and he sits down with us and we were having dinner at this point. I think we have a dessert at this point. And we start talking about this kid, Peter Pan. And Joey Molino's laughing at all the stories and, you know, the, the, uh, the things that this kid got himself involved in. And he said, where is this kid? I said, well, he's not allowed in, you know, he's not allowed in the, in the place and, and whatnot, right? And what had happened is we were going to go and leave from there and go for a drink or have a drink at the bar. But uh, Joey Molina says, oh, I got to meet this kid. I says, if you want to meet him, I'll call him. I'll tell him to go to this other bar, CJ's, which was down, down a couple of blocks away. You know, he's, he's allowed in there. So he says, yeah, we'll go for a drink. I call the kid up. He must have been circling the area because he, he knew we were there. And within seconds, he was at, he was at CJ's. And um, I introduced him to Joey Molino. We're having drinks, kidding around. Unbeknown to me, what happened, I'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, we all say goodbye and everybody goes their own ways. How Peter Tuccio, this Peter Pan, starts getting close to this Joey Molino is he looks him up on Instagram, which, and I'm not trying to knock Joey Molino, but if you think about it, let's just think about it. Imagine someone, imagine Carlo Gambino being alive in today's times and some, and, and an associate being able to contact him not on his house phone, but on social media through Instagram, which, which that's really the way it took place. And that's how he started messaging Molino and Molino was messaging back and, and, and so on and so forth. So to move the story along further, I was in a restaurant one night and I happened to be in Rosemary's in Long Island, and I spoke about that, that pizzeria restaurant, and I was having a dinner with a bunch of guys, and this kid, Peter Pan, calls me. I take the excuse myself. I take the call. What's up? He says, listen, I just left Michael Palmacio. He just left Ronnie G. Ronnie told him, you're lucky that this guy, John, told me what happened because I was going to shelf you. He says, and Palmacio don't know how to thank you. You saved him. I said, Tom, don't worry about it. He says, no, he wants to meet you. and wants to buy you a drink and have a drink with you to thank you. I says, Pete, it's not necessary. I'm, I'm out in Long Island. He says, no, I'm meeting him now. I'm meeting him at Woodhaven House, the same place that I met him when he told me that he torched this, this Mercedes. I says, well, look, let me get back to what I'm doing. I'll let you know, but I'm, I'm in the middle of something right now. But when I tell you that this kid continuously messaged and messaged my phone, message after message, my phone kept going off. I kept looking at the texts. I'm in the middle of something, talking with people. I'm so disgusted. And he's not listening to me. So I messaged him and I said, I told you I'm in the middle of something and you keep texting my phone. He says, oh, well, we're here and he's waiting for you. I said, oh, he's waiting for me. All right, listen, I told you I'm in the middle of a meeting. When I'm done, I'll get back to you. Messaging me, messaging me, messaging me. I said, I can't believe this kid. So finally, I lose my patience and I write him. I said, listen, I'm not going to tell you again. I'm in the middle of something. Stop texting me about this. And he answers back in what I could take as a disrespectful way. I think he wrote back, oh, really? It's something like cocky. And 
now I go, I said, hey, Pete, you know, you're not talking to one of your friends. And he wrote something else back, whatever it was, I took it as a sign of disrespect. Now I'm fuming. I stop what I'm in the middle of. I excuse myself. I get up, I jump in the car. I'm going to Howard Beach to go look for this kid. I want to crack him in the face. And once again, I'm talking about when I was in a life back then. And I'm fuming. I'm on the Southern State Parkway doing 70, 80 miles an hour headed towards Howard Beach. I'm so mad. My phone rings and it's Joe Perna. Now, I had known that obviously Joe Perna spoke with this kid, but I had known that Joey Molino was in contact with this kid and Joe, Joe Perna and myself had spoken about it and said, yeah, he messages uh, Joey in Florida and to Instagram and all of that. You know, that was Joey Molino's choice. If he wanted to associate with this kid, you know, that was up to him. I didn't think it was the greatest idea, but that was up to him. So Joe Perna calls me and says, hey, what's doing, Bo? I says, Joe, I'm going to Howard Beach right now. I'm going to crack this kid right in his mouth. What happened? And I start telling him a little bit. I said, Joe, I don't even want to, I'm so mad. I don't want to talk about it. I want to just go and look for this kid. So Joe Perna tells me, he says, listen, do me a favor, please. Just stop the car. Just turn around and go back. Go back to where you came from. Don't do it. So I said, Joe, I'm not going to let this kid be disrespectful. This kid, you know, these guys, these bananas, they're right. This kid, this kid's cocky and disrespectful. They're 100% right. And what happens is, is that he tells me, he says, listen, you're right. And you're in the right right now. You're going to go from right to wrong. And I'm going to tell you why. Now you're going to go hit the guy's nephew, you know, and it's an insult to him or in the same bagata. You know, I wouldn't do it if I was you. I know you want to do it. I got better yet. You know what we do? He said, let's just all cut this kid off. I'll cut him off. You cut him off. And I'll reach out to that guy in Florida, meaning Joe, Joe Molino, and I'll tell him he's disrespectful. Let's cut him off. That's what made me stop and get off and go back to Long Island. That's the only thing that made me. Because I said, you know something? That probably would be worse than smacking him for him. He'd rather get the smack than be cut off by us. And ultimately, I was the only one who stuck to that. I was the only one out of us three, meaning Joe Perna, Joey Molino, and myself, that stuck to that agreement. They continued to associate with this kid. And let me tell you why. And I'm sure many of you are intelligent enough to know why. You don't have to be in that life to know why. When I said that this kid was a wannabe, I wasn't trying to knock him or insult him because I, I also said that at one time, even myself and all of us were wannabes, right? However, this kid had no brains. He was a kid that you could go, hey, go do that. And he'll go do it. He won't even think about it. He'll just go do it. He don't think of circumstances. Obviously, look, look at the problem he's in now. And that's why they, want, they didn't cut him out of their lives. They kept him. And as, as many people have messaged me, isn't this the same kid that was seen walking down the court stairs with Joey Molino? Yeah, he is. Want to know why? Because he's a guy that could use this kid to do things for him. And this kid's stupid enough and he is gullible enough and wants to be part of that life so bad that he's the guy who's going to do it. And that's, that's really the gist of, of this whole kid Peter Pan. And that's, I tried to fill in the rest of the story. And that's, 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 that's really it. This was just a short one. I have many messages have come in asking me a little bit. You said you skipped over some parts. Can you fill it in? And I decided to just fill that in. I, it wasn't much, but I just wanted to just give a little more background behind what took place, especially who Ronnie G gave the ultimatum to was Michael Palmacio because he was not happy that Palmacio was still in contact with this kid because his whole crew had it out for this kid. And I just found it not funny, but I found it typical that 
the one guy that he was closest to is the guy who actually set up the beating that he took that night. So that's really it. I hope everyone enjoys that night. And until the next time, ciao.